The more items that you can print with your heat press, the more sales opportunities that you can capitalize on. In the video you're about to watch, we'll walk you through how to print more in your business. This session was previously recorded in our Heat Press for Profit live virtual event in January 2021. I hope you enjoy and I know it will help you grow. Thanks for attending. I'm looking forward to uh, showing you this video. Uh, it'll be uh, popping up here and I plan to uh, be in the chat with uh, a, and answer some questions for you. And then at the end, um, I can do the same. So um, I'm gonna get this started for you. Uh, again, I appreciate everybody being here and uh, let's get started. All right, hello everyone. My name is Danny Marcario, and in this presentation, we're gonna be looking at print more per hour and setting up your pro productivity at home. This is one of my favorite subjects. I really like uh, helping as much as I can with this particular topic because it starts to get you thinking in a different way, creating more revenue, getting more product through the door, Overall, it just it just gets me really excited to uh, to you know help you guys with these things. So uh, let's take a look at this first quote because I think it's important to kind of start with our thinking and kind of kick this off. Being successful doesn't just come from large orders; it is also being efficient and effective. This is an interesting way to start thinking because if you've got a whole bunch of orders in your door and you're and you're working hard. Does that equate to the maximum profit and the the way that I'm working to get these orders through the door? Is, you know, is all the different projects that I'm working on, are they the best projects? Are they the ones that are, that are making me the most money? And if they are, how can I be more efficient with them? How can I eliminate some of them? How can I increase in different areas? What are some of the steps that, that need to be taken to get to that point and uh, some of the questions that, that go with them. So let's check out our checklist. So with this uh, presentation, we're gonna focus on some different things, starting with space. What's my footprint? What's the organization in that space? How can I maximize that work area? And we'll get into some of those details. What equipment do I have? What do I need and when do I need it? What are some of the accessories that can help me work smart and efficiently? And how can it save me time because time is so important? And then what are the types of transfers that I can work with that are going to maximize this focus that we're gonna create? So if you're new to the business, then this is going to be really helpful, but if you're already, if you've already been in the business and you've already been doing heat printing, I still think there's a lot of value here in some of these things that, that we're, that we're talking about. Um, and I think one of the things that's overlooked a lot is, do you have a customer product in mind? And then what focus is there with that? And what are some different ways to stick to it? So if, if you're going to focus on a, on a specific thing or a product or a customer, then sticking to it doesn't mean that you're just gonna do that and that only. What I'm saying is once you pick that focus and you decide to branch into something else, that focus is, needs to be stuck to just as much as, as, as what you initially started with. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're in sporting goods and you've started with soccer and you start to see some potential in fast pitch. You already have a focus and you know that you're good at soccer, but you want to get into fast pitch. Creating your focus into fast pitch and sticking to that and making sure that you know how to do soccer and how to fast, how to do fast pitch is what I'm getting at. Another example is let's say you're you're into uh, doing some e-commerce business and you're doing really good with t-shirts and sweatshirts, but you want to expand into the hat market. That's fine. I'm not saying don't expand. What I'm saying is if you're going to get in hats, choose that focus. What am I going to be selling with hats? What are the, what's the type of decoration I'm going to be doing with that? And make sure you're sticking to it. So as that focus starts to come into play, and, and you start to get some of those things gelling a little bit, then you start to think, okay, well, what is the stuff that I have and that work area that I have 
and when do I upgrade? And up, upgrading is it really comes down to a lot of different questions that you need to ask, and you know where that focus branches off into. Like we talked about, is if you start if you start in one sport and you expand into another sport, then that's going to probably start that conversation of when to upgrade. And some of the things moving into topic four is how do I scale that growth with the data? And then what plan can I put into place to back that up? Now, scaling with data is not as complicated as that might sound. One, one way to think about this is, is if you know you're doing, you know, this much revenue in soccer and you know that you can add this much more in fast pitch, then you start thinking, okay, I did $20,000 in soccer. I think I'm going to be adding 15,000 in revenue from fast pitch. How can I, how can I scale that? Do I have enough people? Do, you know, do I have the, the enough equipment? Do I have enough heat presses? Am I going to need a hat press? And you know, all of these things start to, to come into play. That's what I mean by scale with growth. Um, the growth will tell you the capacities that you're at, at the, assuming you're working at the highest efficiency. Once you start to hit your capacities of how much you can do in a day or take care of multiple customers or branch off into some of these other things that you want to do, that will start to tell you the data that you need to know in how you want to grow. And then the plan to back that up is it doesn't always have to be a pen to paper or a, a, a typed up business plan that you have to stick to. What I'm saying is take an idea that you have, put it into your mind and make sure that you have that plan and you can back it up. And I think one of the things that, that people really have a hard time with is they, they, they start, their mind starts racing into all these different things that they can do and they don't scale it. They don't take that that data and 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 this plan and, and put it all together. They just want to do everything. And I think going back to to what we talked about, picking that focus and sticking to it, and knowing which ways you're heading into with that growth, you you'll be a lot better off. Here are some of the things that uh, that you can start to create with heat printing. You've got you know all these different categories that I mentioned a couple before, like sports, and uh, we we talked about e-commerce, but there's so many other things. There's the craft market. There's the whatever part of the business that you want to get involved in. I just want you to know that there's really there's really not much you can't do with a heat press. There's so many different things open to you. So start thinking of some of those things that you're really good at. What I could possibly branch off into, and what other ways can I start generating more revenue and more profits with some different things that I might want to do? So the first thing we talked about before in our checklist was uh, space. And then the next thing was the equipment. Those things go hand in hand. So I kind of wanted to talk about both at the same time here. And when you're evaluating your space, I want you to start thinking of, you know, the square footage that I have. The, how, how's my equipment going to fit into this? Um, do I need more electrical? You know, what, what, what are some of those things that go with that plan and, and that focus? What, how am I going to make this work? And, and how, how am I going to uh, create more space for some of these other considerations that I'm thinking about doing? You know, maybe um, you've decided that I want to get into vinyl cutting. Maybe that's part of that focus. Um, how am I going to maximize the, the weeding that I'm going to be doing with that cutting? Um, the heat applications that I'm going to be doing, do I, do I have the maximized area and the equipment to be doing those type, type of heat applications? If I'm doing e-commerce, do I have the right area to be doing packing and shipping? Am I going to be shipping myself? How, how, what's my plan to go behind that? And what's the space that, that needs to go with it? And then one of the ones that I think is super important and uh, we'll focus on on this a little bit more uh, as, as we move through here, but I think adaptable work areas are very, very important. And some of the accessories and things that go with them, 
Um, adaptable work areas are, are work areas that can always evolve and change depending on what you decide to get into with that focus we talked about. So if you're going to expand the sports market you're in or the e-commerce or some of these other things that we've talked about, is this space going to be able to change uh, easy enough so that I can start to, to scale and work with those different things that I'm wanting to do? Here's an example. Let's say in your work area, you've created these uh, permanent workbenches that are attached to the wall. And those workbenches are great. They're, they're sturdy. They, they do everything that you need, need them to do. But maybe they have some constraints in how much product you can fit in that particular room. Or maybe um, the, the workbenches that are permanent uh, fixed height is harder for somebody else to work in that area with the heat press that's sitting on it uh, versus yourself. So you might have some, uh, you know, an employee or somebody working with you that it, it hinders them in a way because they're not able to, to work in the same area the way that you are. If you have adaptable work areas and adaptable equipment accessories to go with them, there's never a time that you're going to have constraints. And I, I think that's one of the, the very best things that you can do. So let's talk about some of the accessories that can fit into this and what would go along with some of those adaptable work areas that I mentioned. So once, once we have that space determined, we, we know that I'm going to need, you know, these types of heat presses, how many of you're going to, of those heat presses you're going to need, what are some of my add on equipment pieces and accessories to go with this? And uh, an, an example of an adaptable work area, as you, as you can see here in the picture, is you have a heat press, press on a caddy stand is going to make that press movable in your work area. Maybe you've got a, a giant uh, job that you're working on where you know 500 sweatshirts have come in, and the way to fit them in this work area is to move the heat press over here and this folding table over here. And if I do that, I can create the most efficient way to get that particular job done. What are the platens that I'm going to need? Um, you know, am I going to need different platen sizes to be working from adult to youth? What are some of the uh, tools and accessories that are going to go with those platens? You know, it, how much does a cover make a difference in those platens? What are some of the tools, some of the pillows, the, the pads, um, weeders, all those different things that, that add up to creating some of these efficiencies that we'll talk about uh, moving forward in this? And then a huge topic that, that really makes a big difference is organization. If you have adaptable work areas combined with organization, and then you start to increase this, this efficiency that we're gonna talk about, it's game over. You start to, to really make some headway. And the, the really cool thing about organization is that if you create those adaptable work areas that are organized, the next person that comes to use that area like let's say that you want to go on a vacation and the person that you're working with is, is going to be able to go into the shop and they can go in there and they can, they can see everything that's there. It's all organized. It's the exact way that uh, you left it. They're, they're, they recognize that organization. They know how that workspace works. Every time somebody goes into that area, they're going to be just as efficient as when you were working in that area. So it, it's, it's, it, it all starts to gel and come together when you start thinking of it that way. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a break here, show some of these accessories, show some of this equipment, and show you little things that really start to make that difference. This is going to be a quick demonstration of how the Hoptronic 16 by 20 auto clam can help make you more efficient with some simple accessories and the way that you have the machine set up. You'll notice here that the platen that I have loaded does not have a quick slip cover on it. The platen will work just fine, but it makes it a little bit more difficult to get my shirt threaded onto here because that silicone is a little bit stickier than when I have the cover on there. You can see now where I've added the quick slip cover onto our 16 by 20 platen, and it's much easier to grab the shirt and load it on here and have it ready to go. 
The other cool thing about this particular cover is that it will allow you to, instead of having to take the shirt all the way off of the platen, you can just pull it back a little bit and twist it and quickly slide it back on so that you can do your back press. So you can transition front to back very quickly. This machine also features a, a, a pressure guide on there. So it tells you what pressure you're at as you're moving through the job, which also saves time and adjustment. The, uh, this particular press also has uh, two different time settings. So you can set a pre-press and your main press. I'll demonstrate that quickly here. This first press to remove moisture from my, uh, any garment that has cotton in it. First press is five seconds. This will pop up for me. I can grab my transfer, put it onto my garment and do my second press. That second press will then run for my, my the press time that I wanted on this particular job, which was 13 seconds. Another thing to take note of here is that the press is up off of the table or off of the surface that I'm working with. It's sitting on what's called a counter caddy. This gives me that threadability and that space in between here to, to make it a, a lot easier to get the garment on and off the, the platens that I'm working with. Quick change platens allow you to remove the platen that you're currently using and adapt to the next job by quickly switching them out. So hopefully um, some of these things are starting to come together with, you know, the workspace and the equipment and the accessories and, and it's starting to get you excited about some of the different transfers that you can use. Uh, so this chart that we're looking at here, this is what to use when. Uh, very cool way to look at uh, how to line up your color quantity with the garment quantity and the type of transfer to go with it. So along the top, you can see the amount of colors that are involved in the transfer that you want to create, and then the amount of uh, garments or items that you're wanting to do going down the left side. When you intersect those two, it starts to put you in the categories that, that would, you know, we would recommend uh, be most helpful for that particular uh, job that you're working on. So with those transfers that we talked about, some of those categories, we've got uh, single color vinyl or what we call CAD cut. And in that uh, CAD, cut, CAD cut category, we've got ultra weed as an example. These are uh, heat applied individually. They're best for, you know, single color, two color jobs. Uh, the, this really starts to open up a lot of possibilities for you, especially if you're able to bring in a vinyl cutter and uh, in your work area, you, you can cut the vinyl and prepare it. You, you essentially are your own manufacturer at that point. Uh, you can do some really cool stuff with that. The next is screen printer transfers, Goop proof being the focus here. Uh, these are plastisol screen printer transfers that uh, essentially are the same as if it came from the screenshot. Uh, when they show up, uh, you're, you press them, it's, it's quick, it's easy, it's one hit, four seconds, peel hot, and you're ready to go. In my opinion, I think you're actually getting a better look and a better feel than if it came from the screenshot. The other nice thing is that this really helps with some of that scalability we talked about because now you can uh, put screen printer transfers on the shelf and be able to produce product not only in large quantities, but one at a time because you have those transfers ready to go at any time. Uh, the next category is full color. Uh, the primary focus here would be Ultra Color Soft, which is also a Transfer Express product. This is where you're combining what you can do with screen print along with what you can do in the digital world of transfers. So uh, anything you can put in a vector file or, or anything that, uh, that you can put in a CMYK color formats, uh, upload it. There's no additional charges for art or anything as long as it's in vector. And we're now able to create a transfer that does not have any constraints with contours or outlines. Very cool product. One of the best ones out there. Definitely check that one out. So some of the tips for uh, efficiency. What I like to think of here is what are, what are the things that I can do that are passive and what are some of the things that I can do actively or proactively with, with uh, some of the things on this list here. So some of the things that are passive um, are what, you know, if I'm going to get into the e-commerce world of selling things, 
what platform can I use that can accept orders, take payments, you know, give me all the data that I need to process the orders that come in through it. And I think one of the best ones out there, of course, is uh, what we call Spirit Cell from Stalls. Definitely worth checking out, but this gives you that, that full capability of an e-commerce platform. While that platform is working, you can be doing other things. You can be working on other jobs. You can be, you know, taking care of other things that are important. You can even be sleeping and you're making money. It's pretty cool. Um, take advantage of services. Sales will provide uh, tr vinyl transfers for you that are ready to go. So you send us in your art, we'll take a look at it, make sure that it's the way that you want it, have you approve it. You can then take that art, go into your cart, place your order, and we send you transfers that are have already been cut. They've already been weeded. They're ready to pull out of the box and start transferring. Definitely a big help. And this is also a way to maximize your efficiencies in the way that if you are if you already have four or five jobs in 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 your work area and you're trying to get those done and somebody comes to you with that 500 sweatshirt order that we talked about and they want to do vinyl on those particular items you can send us the job we'll make the 500 transfers for you while you're working on those other four or five jobs that's efficiency that's where you start to really create some of these things to uh, you know maximize your profits and really utilize the, the, the your valuable time so uh, definitely something to look at in uh, custom cutting and services that are available to you um, another thing is is that you can keep an inventory like we talked about sporting goods uh, if you're doing jerseys for example um, numbers you can have pre-cut numbers that are already on the shelf ready to go so as soon as a job comes to you you could go to you know some of your core colors maybe you've got white black red and royal for example and you're able to go to your pre-cuts pull those off the shelf and uh, you know start producing right away uh, not only is it efficient but you're able to take care of that customer quickly and provide a quality product to them uh, really the next day if, if you need to really really cool way to think there um, you want to as we talked about before you want to make sure you maintain your clean work area this is going to streamline the process there's so many little things here that save three seconds five seconds ten seconds maybe even more on on any particular process that you're using to, uh, to you know to process an order or to make each press on onto the garments that you're working with or hats or apply this to anything because it, it would apply to, to all of them that clean work area and some of these little tips that that I can show you really start to add up. And ultimately uh, highlighted at the bottom there is time is money. Your time is valuable. I think another thing that people really overlook is the time that they put into things. You know, you, you, you're already busy enough. Maybe, maybe this is a side hustle for you and, and you've got your main job and then you're doing this on the side. Maybe this is your primary focus. At the end of the day, your time is valuable. You want to spend time with your family. You want to spend time doing things that you want to do. You want you, There's all kinds of ways to maximize your profits, maximize your efficiencies, but at the same time have, have time to do other things and time to add more into what you're doing. So more put through, more product, more efficiencies. Time is the key to that. So let's take another quick break here and I'll show you some of the ways that you can have this clean work area, streamline the process and add more time magically that you didn't think was there. In this example, I'm gonna show you some hidden efficiencies that uh, really start to add up. And uh, at the end of this, you'll really see what I'm talking about of how it can help you. You'll notice that we have our uh, press set up the way that we had it, I've got my uh, quick slip cover. I've got my counter caddy, so I have my threadability. Um, I'm going to show you how I have these shirts arranged. The collar is facing down, so I have the bottom of the shirts uh, where I'm grabbing the, the bottom versus the collar, so I don't have to flip the shirt around. By doing that, that saves me a few seconds time to prepare this shirt and get it onto the platen and load it and ready to go. So I'm able to get my shirt in place. You also notice that the transfers that I have ready here are sitting right next to the shirts 
in a nice organized pile so it's very easy to grab them and they're oriented in the way that they're ready to be placed on the shirt. So they're already facing this direction. I can remove my backer, put my transfer in place, and then begin the process of doing my pressing. In this area, there's no boxes in the way, there's no bags. The, uh, the Maybe the, the bag or the, the box that the transfers came in, you know, you still have your transfers set up that way and, and you're, you're pulling it out of that box every time you're pressing. Maybe the shirts that I'm working with are in a box behind me and they're folded up. And so I'm, you know, digging through this box to pull it out and load it up. And, you know, if it's three seconds here and four seconds here, or, uh, five seconds there, it's not that hard to add up, say, 12 seconds per press as you're moving through the process of a job. So think about this for a minute. If you were doing a 200 t-shirt job and you were saving 12 seconds per press, that's gonna give you 40 minutes back in time that wasn't there before. Just by increasing these efficiencies and these small things that you can do, keeping your area organized, how you orient the items that you're pressing, and really be conscious of how this these small amounts of time can add up and really save you a lot of time at the end of the day. 40 minutes can complete two other jobs. 40 minutes could be on the phone creating sales. 40 minutes is a big deal. See? Magic. Time that was that's there that you didn't think was. Hopefully that was helpful to see. And I want to leave you with some key points. You know, staying motivated in, in what you're doing is, is definitely going to help you, you know, to always evolve and always increase the efficiencies and the things that we've talked about today. 110%, always put as much as you can into this. It's what got you here and what got you started in wanting to get into heat printing. The more motivated you can be, the, the better you're, you're gonna be at what you do. Stay informed and educate yourself. Understand as much as you can. Talk to decorators, go to shows, you know, it, get as much as you can out of it. Even talk to decorators that aren't involved in heat printing and learn how to integrate that into what you're doing with heat printing because there's so many different things going on that it just always cool stuff to learn. Um, stay informed with uh, what Stalls and, and Transfer Express provides to you. There's always stuff that we're doing. We're the leaders in it and we pride ourselves on it. So always be on the lookout for that. Stay ahead of the trends in equipment and products. It's important that at these shows and the people that you talk to, learn what they're using, how they're using it, compare it to what's out there. Look at a, a, a press that's 300 bucks overseas and compare that to a Hotronics press. The more that you're involved in, in staying ahead of these trends and, and the equipment and products to go with them, the more success you'll have from it. I appreciate the opportunity to help you with this presentation. Again, my name is Danny Marcario, and thank you for your time. All right, hopefully everybody can hear me now. I know we had some technical difficulties getting started. My apologies for that. Hopefully you were able to see most of the video and it wasn't too choppy for you. Um, I do want to open up questions that maybe didn't get answered or help out with uh, some of the things, uh, questions that you have moving forward. Let's look through this uh, chat here and see what we can do to help you. I think there was a question here about lining up transfers and the easiest way to do that. The um, th There's a few ways to do that. I think lining up transfers is a lot of it comes from experience so it's placing the shirt onto the or the garment onto the to the uh, to the press and understanding how that particular transfer is going to fit on that shirt the problem is is that shirts are are never really sewn straight so if you're using something like a laser alignment or a tool to create alignment then it may not actually be aligned because the shirt isn't. So what I would look for is key indicators on the, on the item itself and uh, maybe come up with some different uh, ways for alignment that work for you. Um, I've seen people create their own templates. I've seen uh, people create spacers and certain things that 
help them with alignment. And I would recommend um, more of doing that than looking at a system that is a, is a little bit more set in place. I do, however, think that the laser alignment is something to look into if you're trying to get very exact spacing between two different types of transfers, say a name and a number, for example. Let's see, what else we have here? There's another question that says, is there an easy way to weed that isn't putting your face two inches near the vinyl? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, it, it all depends on, you know, how fine the detail is in your, um, in your transfers. And one way to do that, and I, I mentioned in, in the video, is that you can use us for services. So if it's something that, um, you know, it's a, a job that, that might have a little bit more time involved in weeding, um, send it to us and we can do that for you. Um, that would be helpful. Um, a couple of questions here about storing. Um, referring to transfers and referring to storing vinyl rolls, I would definitely recommend, um, you know, keeping, keeping those in a climate controlled area. Uh, if you're, you know, it, you don't want any of those transfers exposed to extreme heat or cold or moisture. So, um, you know, typical room temperature and away from moisture as much as possible. Um, that's, that's what I would recommend for those. Uh, storage is really it's going to depend on the type of transfer. Uh, most transfers will last you about uh, about a year. Some transfers could could last a little bit less depending on the type of transfer. Um, but I would definitely keep those in climate controlled areas to, to make sure you optimize the, uh, the storage time that you have with them. Uh, question here in in my opinion, is a pedestal stand far better than a desktop caddy? You know, that really depends on, on um, it really depends on your work area and how adaptable you want to make that work area. I prefer the, the caddy stand because it not only makes the press movable, but it's also height adjustment. Having height adjustment is, is definitely a big deal if you have multiple users or different users using the same machine because you can height adjust it for them. So I would steer you towards the caddy stand if, if there's a question between the two, but sometimes you're in an area where the caddy stand is maybe a little bit too big to be working in, or maybe it doesn't fit in that particular area, and that's where the, the counter caddy would be very helpful. But if you have a choice and you have the work area to to allow for it, I would definitely uh, focus on the caddy stand. I think you have a lot of advantages with that. Let's see. Um, I, there, that's an interesting point. The uh, the yardstick, um, using that to go across the armpits um, to give you a straight line. That's a, a perfect example of of what I. What I was saying is, is there's going to be very specific things that depending on the job that you're doing and how you're aligning it to the particular garment that you're working with, those types of uh, things are going to be the most helpful because it, it, it will adapt to the alignment and the, and the transfer and the garment that you're working with specifically rather than a generic way of doing it. So I, I do like those innovative ideas. <clears throat> 